Welcome to Crafty Beach. I have another tear tray idea for you today. But first, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, the bell to be notified, and a thumbs up is always appreciated. Okay, so my three tier tray uh, needed a new theme, the one I keep on my kitchen table. So I wanted to do flamingos. I think flamingos is fun for summer. It's too early to make my tear tray on my kitchen table for fall. And so I have been collecting some flamingo items from my Dollar Tree and I thought this was perfect. I had coastal 4th of July going on on this tear tray and uh, I just didn't think it was gonna work for the rest of the summer. So I thought flamingos would be perfect. So this guy is really not that bad. Um, the only thing I did was cut off the little googly eyes um, on this little flamingo. They had these available in two different colors, like a light pink and a darker pink. Um, I'm just going over it with um, a chalk paint that I made there by mixing crimson and ivory to give this pretty color of pink. And the only reason I'm really painting this is to make it not like look so shiny, that tensely, um, you know, kind of material that they wrap this stuff with at the Dollar Tree. This one wasn't that bad, this little flamingo, but I thought maybe I can make it look a little less cheap by making it look a little less shiny. So I'm just going all over the pink part of the flamingo and giving it a good coat of paint. Now, this did take a very long time to dry, so be prepared for that. I'm glad I did this craft first. And then I'm using some chalk paint for the legs. I think the color on this one is pumpkin. And it's kind of um, a better color, I think, um, for the flamingo's legs. And again, I'm just trying to get rid of some of that shine on the little tinsel and going over his legs and his feet. And it was pretty easy to paint this material. You, I did kind of have to push the little foam brush um, up and down to get it down into all the little grooves. And then I thought that his beak is just black and I think it really should have like a little orange part too. So I'm using that same paint color just to paint a little you know, part on the little flamingo nose just to give it a little bit more um, character and color. I thought about um, drawing eyes back on it since I took the little googly eyes off, but I think it kind of looks better more abstract than um, like, you know, it doesn't have feathers, it doesn't have eyes. Just kind of a cool shape of a flamingo. And there we go. I think um, the only thing I have left is the little tip of his beak, and I'm gonna do that with some chalk paint and ink. Um, chalk paint by Waverly. And that is all I'm gonna do to this little flamingo. And he's gonna be ready for our tear tray. This is my uh, big three tear tray. It's my metal one that I keep on my kitchen table. So I'm gonna need lots of flamingo crafts to fill this thing up. And so this is craft number one. He is a little hard to stand up, but once you get his legs kind of adjusted right, he's good to go. Okay, next up I found these adorable little flamingo flip-flops at the Dollar Tree. And I bought them in the smallest size I could find. I think this was a kid's size small. Um, if they would have had extra small, I would have bought that too. Um, I was just trying to find a pair that was small enough to go on a tear tray. And this was probably about as big as they could have been. Now I cut off the little plastic flip floppy things just because I thought they looked a little cheap. I thought I could make them look a little bit better. But first they're a little bit glossy, the flip flops. So I'm just going over them with some matte Mod Podge to try to take away some of that sheen and um, to make them look like a little bit more of a flat surface and something that's been crafted. So after I got the Mod Podge on there, I'm just giving those a quick dry with my lovely heat gun. And I'm gonna give one more coat because they still were a little bit shiny. And the back of them really isn't, so I didn't really have to do the back, but just a couple coats of Mod Podge on the front. 
I think it did help take some of the shine away. And then to replace the little plastic um, thong parts to um, the little flip-flop, I'm just gonna use some of that decorative rope there from the Dollar Tree to replace those to make, make it give it like a beachy feel. And so I'm just gonna cut open this new package. Now these have tape on the end um, and that actually makes it easier to string through. I'm just kind of seeing how long I need one to be. And then I'm cutting out two pieces. And the little tape part fits inside the little hole a little bit better. Um, I didn't really think that it was necessary to tie it off because it kind of just stays in there. So I'm just cutting off a little bit more of the tape part so it doesn't show when it is pulled all the way through there. And then I am going to just use some tape to... Um, mark off like the end of this like it was on the other and so that I can get it to go through the hole easily and so I'm just using some scotch tape and pulling that through kind of getting it like um, the length that I would like and then this is the piece for the other side now I can't um, get both ropes through that hole in the middle I can only get it through the bottom so I'm just gonna have to use um, a little bit of hot glue to glue that together, the two pieces of rope. And that is all there is to it. I think they look pretty cute. I think they look um, cuter with the rope on them than they did with the little plastic flip-flop part. But if you're short on time, they would have looked fine just as is. So I'm just kind of arranging them, like trying to get like the right exact length and I'm happy with that. So here I'm cutting off another piece, taping the ends and putting it through the holes just like I did on the first one. Kind of getting the right length and then trimming them off. And then this piece, I am gonna do the same thing I did on the first one. I'm just gonna use um, some tape to get it started here and then some hot glue to glue my thong together. And these turned out really cute. I have a coastal theme in my house, of course, Crafty Beach, and so thongs are always in style in this house for sure. And there we go. I thought they might be a little bit easier to work with if I were to glue them together so they're like one piece. So I'm just using a little dot of hot glue on the top and the bottom where they'll come together and that is it. Okay, so this next project is an ice pack that I picked up actually at Dollar General for a dollar. And I saw it, it was a flamingo and it was large and I was like, oh my gosh, I can totally make something with this. And I am going to attempt to cover it with rope. Now, this was my first idea was to use this decorative rope from the Dollar Tree to wrap it around and give it a nice coastal feel. Now, I use a little hot glue here to get started. And then I started wrapping that around a little bit, the flamingo shape. I was really hoping that this uh, method would work because this rope covers really well and it's like a nice quick way to like cover something and make it look really coastal. But... Once I got started here, I like wrapped around and around and then I, I came to trouble. There was like too many areas to go around. You see what I mean there? Like I was never gonna be able to get this um, tight enough around those corners on the flamingo neck. So I decide I'm gonna have to use twine. So I'm using um, this twine from the Dollar Tree and using a little hot glue um, to get it started around the tip of its beak. And then basically all I'm gonna do is wrap this entire flamingo with this twine. I pretty much use that entire roll of twine to wrap this flamingo. This was a very, <laughs> it took a long time <laughs> to make this craft. So if you're gonna do something here like this and this size, you're gonna wrap it with twine, just give yourself some time. I mean, it just takes a little bit of patience, but 
I'm going to speed this way up because it really took a long time to get it covered. Basically, I just went around the beak and then I went around the head and then I went around the neck where I can easily um, fill it in. From there, it was easier to kind of go to the bottom up and then I'm gonna finish going down the neck where I can get to it. When I got to the body part, I could wrap it around like the body with like skipping a part. Whatever I could do was easy. I was gonna do on this first round and then I went over the legs and here I am going over the feet. I am having to use a little bit of hot glue um, on the feet part here just on the ends to keep it from falling off. And I'm trying to cover as much as I possibly can. This, this end, I just cut the string and went around and around until I covered that tip of the um, foot. And here I am doing the same thing on the other side. I wanna cover up all of that pink ice pack and as much as I can. Now, like there's some areas that are harder to get to here, I'm going to try to just do the tail. And so I used a little hot glue to get started. And then I am wrapping that twine all the way around its tail until as far as I can go. And again, I have to keep kind of turning it over to make sure that I'm getting most of the pink covered. If a little shows through, it's not the end of the world. But if I can get most of it um, covered in the twine, I think it's going to look better. And then from there, I am like trying to get this area that I had to skip on the neck because when you're like wrapping it around, when it, you have all these weird angles, you kind of have to like kind of just go how it has you, you want to go. So I had to like start going this direction that I hadn't went before with the twine, but that was the only way I was really going to be able to cover that part unless I cut little tiny pieces out and covered that area, which I didn't really want to do. I wanted to keep it wrapped. And it looks kind of cool going like several directions like that. So I cut off a piece to finish off the beak of the flamingo as well, to try to cover up all the pink parts. And we did it. Now it's all frayed, so I'm just using a lighter to go over and burn off any of the fuzzies from wrapping this thing in twine. And it may have taken a long time to make this, but I really love how it turned out. It really has a coastal feel, and it's a really nice large flamingo project for only a dollar plus the cost of twine. I found this adorable flamingo at the Dollar Tree, and I knew I had to have that for my tear tray for sure. Now, this is a flamingo wood puzzle that I picked up in the toy department at my Dollar Tree. I was really nervous about this project because the, the wood is really thin on these and I thought for sure I was gonna break a piece and then I wasn't gonna be able to get it to put together. So I'm being very careful taking that all apart. I put them in the same order that I took them out because there is a map on the back of that sheet of paper there that each piece has like a letter and number. And so I knew if they were in the same order, I would be able to find them easily when I go to put them together. Now, I have never done one of these before. I was kind of laughing because it said ages five and up, but I was focused on this. It took some concentration. I, I can't imagine a five-year-old being able to do this, but whatever. <laughs> So I am following the directions. There's only five ste steps there, but each one has quite a few. So I am putting the head and neck on. There was like three of those to kind of give it like a 3D effect. And everything fit together pretty well. I was pretty impressed with this kit from the Dollar Tree. They had them in several other things. I can't remember what they were. But when I saw the flamingo, I knew for sure that I was going to need that to try um, to make it for my tear tray. And it actually turned out really cool. I thought about painting um, the pieces because I wanted this piece to be pink. Um, but I was afraid that the pieces, if they had paint on them, they wouldn't slide together like they're supposed to um, because of the thickness of the paint. 
So I thought I should probably um, assemble it in this raw wood form. And most all my pieces like stayed on without any extra assistance, except for like one of my last um, wings. There was like three layers to the wings. And on one side, it just kept wanting to fall off. But I do just glue that on. You'll see here in a minute. Just a little bit of hot glue. And I, it did fall off on me a couple times. But once I got it glued on, it was good to go. I tried to use a hammer to say, hey, why don't you fit? But I don't know why that one side. Maybe I didn't get the first piece on all the way. But it was pretty easy to put this together. As long as you follow the directions. So we've got the body put together and we've got the wings and the legs. That one fell off, so I'm trying to get it put back together. And there I am gluing that wing on again with some wood glue and that time it stayed on. Now this is the base and then it had like a couple pieces that kind of worked together, kind of like um, two stories. And that is where I am going to hook the leg to stand up the flamingo. And I was so excited when this thing actually uh, went together and stood up. I, I was laughing there, I believe. And now I'm like, how am I going to make this pink? So it was a little lop, like it wanted to fall over. I didn't think it was weighted down enough. So I am just gluing on a um, giant Jenga block. I picked these up at five below for $10 for a giant box of these um, big Jenga blocks. But you could use whatever you've got just to weigh it down. Now, this is my plan to try to make it pink. I thought, what if I make like a stain that I could spray on? So what I did is I just took an empty spray bottle and I mixed together half of that pink acrylic paint, half water, and then I just started spraying this all over. That way I could get in all of the 3D and the inside parts of the little puzzle, and um, I wouldn't have to get in there with like a paintbrush or anything like that. You could also use spray paint. Um, I didn't have any pink spray paint, so this was just me thinking outside the box. So I'm using my heat gun to try to glue, um, dry some of that stain and I am going over with another coat of our pink stain. And this was totally exp an experiment. I totally didn't know if this would work spraying that on, but it actually turned out really cool. Okay, so I got this little plant from the Target Dollar Spot for $3 in a pink pot. I thought that'd be perfect. And this little flamingo I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And it's one of those little um, ones that dance or move um, like it's solar. I don't know if it's really going to work inside, but I wanted to cover up the green plastic base just to make it look a little bit better. And I didn't really have any grass, so I'm just gluing on some of this um, moss from the Dollar Tree. Now, I'm using school glue to glue this on because I was afraid that my hot glue gun would melt the plastic. And this was definitely not the way to do it because I've hot glued um, that moss on before and it goes on really easily. This was kind of hard. So I'm switching glues here to that spray glue from the Dollar Tree and getting like all the moss really wet with the glue. And it did go better, but it was still like way too time consuming. I think if I were to do it again, I would just use hot glue to glue it on and not really care if it melts like some of the base. And I am sticking as much moss as I can on there to try to get all of that covered up. Now, the flamingo is cute and it's the right color of pink, but I don't want it to look like super cheap and plasticky. So I'm just going over with a coat of um, the matte Mod Podge from the Dollar Tree to try to take away some of the shininess of the little flamingo. And he's dancing for me right now. I don't know if he still will, because I covered up that solar panel with the moss. Maybe I should um, 
free that. I don't know where he sits on my tear tray if it'd be able to get any light. But it would be a fun idea to have him dancing for sure. But I kind of got him just for the flamingo. So I'm trying to dry all of that glue that I had on that moss and he's good to go. Okay, so I found this at the Dollar Tree. It is a flamingo solar stake and look, it even works. So I was thinking that this would be the perfect size flamingo to do something for a tear tray. So I'm using one of these little wood chunky circles from the Dollar Tree. And this one I had previously painted gray for another project. And I am just attaching it with hot glue. Now I'm using hot glue on this one and the hot glue did melt the plastic. But since I'm attaching it to the base, it's okay. But I did have to hold it on there for a while to make sure that it is good and standing on there. See it wanted to fall over. And I used this gray painted base, the circle, um, because that is the same color of my tear tray and I thought it would kind of blend in. But I do end up um, changing that. So these boxes I also picked up at the Dollar Tree and they are two little flamingo boxes just nested together. I'm gonna use one of those for my tear tray. What I did was I went all over the base of that gray base with hot glue and just did little streaks of hot glue to kind of make waves. Now I'm going in with this chalk paint by Waverly in the color Lagoon. And I thought since my last flamingo was in grass, that this flamingo could be in water and that would switch it up a little bit. So I could have just used that plain um, wood um, circle that I had, but sometimes these projects evolve as you're working on them. And so that is what happened with this one. So once I get a good coat of Lagoon on that base and the sides, and all of my waves, I am just giving it a little bit of a speed up with my heat gun. And I can post a link. I got that heat gun on Amazon and it is really nice. It's about $10 on Amazon and I'll post a link below. Now I'm going in with another color of chalk paint just to give the water a little bit more depth. I think the color on this one is pool, but use whatever you've got. In these projects, you'll notice that I'm using chalk paint. I'm using acrylic paint. I'm making colors brighter and darker. It's just like use what you've got until you're happy with it. Um, as long as you've got a lot of colors of paint, you can mix them together and get like pretty much any color that you want. And then I am going over this guy with some Mod Podge, doing the same thing that I did on that last one, just trying to take away some of the shininess on the plastic and make the little flamingo not look um, so, you know, cheap and plasticky. And I love that this lights up. I'm hoping it gets enough light to like power that solar battery on my tear tray. It might, my table is next to a window. So I am speeding up the drying on that Mod Podge. And then I'm gonna go in with a chunky brush from the Dollar Tree and some of that ivory chalk paint and kind of um, just paint over those little waves I made on the water and give like some little white caps to make it give it a little bit more dimension and then I thought my flamingo was a little bit too one color of that hot pink so I'm going to go over with a chunky brush and some of this lighter pink acrylic and it had a really nice texture of like feathers and stuff on there and when you go over and give it a little bit of a dry brushing like this it really brings out like that texture but I don't want it to be like all this color either. So I'm going over with just a baby wipe and wiping off here and there to make that hot pink color shine through and just to give it some more dimension. And I found these at Dollar Tree. These are like a really high quality napkin. Um, I end up using two packages on my tear tray and they're a nice thick white napkin and they have this gold foil flamingo on them. So they're perfect for my tear tray on my table. Now this I picked up at the Target Dollar Spot um, this summer and it had ketchup and mustard in it and it's Adirondack chair and it's perfect for my salt and pepper. So I'm gonna use that on the bottom um, part of my tear tray. Now, no tear tray is complete without a wood bead garland. I love making wood bead garlands. They're so much fun and you can just really be creative and do um, whatever you want with it. It's your project, right? So I found this cute little flamingo um, lip balm at the Dollar Tree 
And it's kind of not that bright pink. It's more of a salmon, like an orange color pink. So I am mixing together um, that pink acrylic paint with some of my pumpkin chalk paint to give me a nice salmon color. And I am going to do that on my large wood beads. I'm going to use a combination of the large wood beads and the medium size wood beads there. And I picked these up on Amazon. They are such great quality. I love making wood bead garlands with them. They're so easy to work with. I'll post a link to those as well below. They are great. I think I'm on my third package of them. I love using them. You get a whole bunch in them too and like three different sizes of wood beads. And what I use to paint those since those are the really large beads, was the, it looks like um, a skewer, but it's actually one of the bigger ones that you use like to roast hot dogs. They have them in the summer um, at Dollar Tree and they fit perfect in there. And I'm just giving um, them a little touch up for some areas around the hole there area that I missed. And then I'm gonna do, um, I did four of the large ones, so I'm gonna do five of these smaller ones. And I'm gonna do these in pink. Um, I thought it would be fun since I'm gonna have two different colors of flamingos um, on my tear tray to include both colors on my tear tray um, on my would be garland. So I am doing this color of pink as well. When I put them on there together, I do the tops and then I turn them over and I do the tops on the other side. And these skewers are great for doing that because um, they don't touch, you can move them around to dry them and stuff like that. Now my camera here did die, so what the only thing you missed is I used that same color I used on the four big beads to paint the bottom of my um, lip gloss because the bottom where the lip gloss is was actually white. And so I just wanted that to look all cohesive. Now I'm mixing a couple of color of green that I have together and I wanna make it a little darker, so I'm adding some black to it, and then I made it too dark. <laughs> and, and so what I was thinking is like more of like a fern color. Um, I think ferns and flamingos go together, and so I thought this color of green would be a nice contrast to um, those two colors of pink that I did. So I'm doing five of those medium-sized beads on this one as well, and you gotta be careful when you're making these um, that you don't paint too many. Um, so I'm trying to uh, restrict myself how many I paint so that I'll probably have exactly enough. And I'm thinking for the big ones, five of each of those small ones. And I am just putting them on my silicone mat there to um, let them dry the rest of the way and making sure that my lip gloss paint is dry as well. Now I'm just using um, what twine I had left over from that Flamingo project. And I'm using a giant needle. You can always use tape on the end or just push it through. It's really not that hard. And just kind of do a pattern that you're happy with. I started and then I was like, you know, natural would look really good in this too. So I am including um, the natural um, wood bead in the pattern. And I'm just kind of alternating. I am gonna have to go back and put um, a natural on the end of the right side there because I hadn't done that. And tie it off on the end. I'm just tying it off three times. That makes a knot that's pretty much big enough to make the wood bead um, garland stay on there. Now I'm just using some hot glue and I'm attaching the natural bead there to the top of my lip gloss there was a crown on that flamingo, so it was a perfect area to hot glue that together. Now for the other end, I'm just gonna use um, some more of that twine to make a tassel. And I kind of just used uh, the rest of the twine that I had there pretty much. And I am just tying that onto the string that was left on the end, other end of our wood bead garland and tying that off into like a double knot, kind of off frame there, sorry about that. And that will be the beginning of our tassel. Once I get that on there, and then I can use the little bit of tassel that I, or the twine that I have left, and I just tie that around, and then I wrap that around the top of my tassel until I'm happy with it. And then I'm actually gonna restring that needle onto the twine so that I can run it underneath what I just did. 
and then cut the end of the loops and I have a tassel. I like it to be a little bit shorter so I am just trimming that all together and we have a wood bead garland for our tear tray. Now I thought I needed one more piece and so I am using um, one of these wood plaques from the Dollar Tree. I love these things. Um, not all of my Dollar Trees have them but they are really nice. They come in several different sizes and they are perfect for a tear tray. Perfect size. I think it's like five by seven. And I am using like pink, that pink and orange color together to kind of give me that salmon um, color again that I used on the wood bee garland just because I haven't really used a lot of this color on the tear tray. So I thought it would be fun to have another project that was that color. And I thought maybe I was a little too orange, so I did add a little bit more pink to it. And just using a foam brush from the Dollar Tree and my heat gun to give that a dry. This raw wood takes the paint really well, especially chalk paint and um, pretty good coverage. So there was an area there where I could see a little bit of wood coming through. So I just went over that small area and I'm making sure that I get this really good and dry because I'm going to use some of these rub on transfers from the Dollar Tree. And these were all like summer and flamingo. So they're perfect. So I'm going to cut out this like really um, large flamingo. I think he would look really nice on there. And then there was a lot of flamingo sayings, but I think it would be kind of hard to read. So I'm just going to do this larger one. Hello Summer. I think that's going to work better for that sign. You just peel off the back and you attach that to whatever you're working with. And then I'm just using uh, my little Cricut scraper. You can use whatever you've got like a hard surface and scrape that on there and peel it off. Isn't that easy? I mean, if you didn't have a Cricut and you needed to personalize stuff, these things from the Dollar Tree are perfect. They are so quick and easy. And here I did the same thing for my flamingo. And I love that gold foil. It turned out so pretty. Now I thought it needed a little bit more pink. So I'm using that pink acrylic paint. And I'm just going to go over just the outside border of that frame. Just to give a little bit um, more pink and a little bit more color to my sign. And I did get a little in the front there. So just cleaning that up and going all the way around the edges of my frame until I have a good coat of pink on there. And I like how those two colors of pink work together. I think they look really nice together and they look super summery to me. So once I get um, that dry, using my heat gun to speed up the process, I'm just going to make a little stand for the back of my sign with one of those giant Jenga blocks that I picked up at five below. But you can use the Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree as well. Um, you'll just have to use, you know, more than one. And I am just going to um, use a combination of wood glue and hot glue for fast term, long term hold and glue that to the back of my sign. These signs are really thick and sturdy and that is how it stands up. Perfect. And then I decided that there was no way I was going to be able to get this little flamingo tray to be seen. And so I'm going to have to make it a stand of some kind. So I'm using those little Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree and I actually had to use six of them um, stacked together to make a stand that was tall enough to glue onto the back of this little flamingo um, glass tray to make it stand up because I want it to be seen. I don't want it to lay, lay flat and there was really nowhere I could like, I think, lean it against anything. It's a pretty big tear tray. So I know you can see this, but I'm not really worried about it because I'm going to use some other items to try to fill in my tear tray and I think I can probably disguise it and it's not that bad. So I just use hot glue to attach those six jingle blocks to the back of my little flamingo tray and now he will stand up and he'll be perfect for my tear tray. Now this is what I was talking about like other things to fill it. I have a couple of these fern plants from the Dollar Tree left over from an old project and they're a little too long so I'm just kind of cutting them the length that I want and just kind of going through and cutting I think enough to fill up any holes that I have on my tear tray 
to give it a fuller look and I think that'll go with it. And then I also picked up some of these pink flowers at the Dollar Tree and I thought I could use those to fill in any holes too and they'll give a nice pop of pink color to our flamingo tear tray and here it is it's all empty and it needs something fun for summer and so let's fill it up with some flamingos so first we're going to start here on the top tier here is that wood puzzle that we put together in stained pink i love that i painted it pink i think that makes it even more special and since this is brown the twine um ice pack from the dollar general um I think those two colors go good together. If they were both brown, I think it would have been a little too plain on the top. And there is our little ceramic um, flamingo. And I'm gonna hide that stand there with a couple of those fern plants. And just kind of filling in any empty spaces with the fern plants and flowers there on the top. And I can just lean that ice pack against the middle rod there. It stands up just fine. And then another a fern plant here on the other side to kind of disguise um, that stand so that you can't really see it. And that is all there is to the top row. So now we're going to go to the second shelf of the tear tray. And here's our little uh, dancing flamingo. He's super cute. And the little pink pot with a little tropical plant that I picked up at the Target dollar spot. I think that was $3.00. Here is one of those flamingo boxes, and it's a little too short, so I'm just gonna use some of those mini Jenga blocks from the Dollar Tree to give it a little bit more height so you can see it a little bit better. And then here is that solar light up flamingo that I got at the Dollar Tree. And here is our adorable little wood bead garland, and I'm kind of thinking where I want it. I think I want it to be on this second shelf of my tear tray and I kind of wanted to hang off the side there so you can see that cute little flamingo and I don't want it to be all hidden inside so I'm kind of pulling um, the would-be garland off the side there a little bit. Now it's time to fill up any holes on this tier of my tear tray. So I'm just using um, the fern plants again and the pink flowers just to give it a full appearance and fill up the second tier. Now we're down to the third tier here and here are our little flamingo flip-flops. They fit in there just perfect. I kind of wedged them in there so it would fill up more um, of that empty space. And here's our little flamingo that I got at the Dollar Tree and all I did was take off the googly eyes and give him a new paint job. Now this is a little chalkboard place um, card setting that I picked up at Target in their party section. And I thought it would be good because it's kind of an angle and I can kind of lean um, my little flamingo napkins that I got at the Dollar Tree on it. And they won't fall over, you can kind of see there. And there is that Hello Summer that we just made with Dollar Tree materials. And here's that little Adirondack chair that I got the Target Dollar Spot. Perfect for my salt and pepper shakers because this is a functional tiered tray on my kitchen table and a pink flower to fill up there. And I'm just gonna go around and fill up any empty or dead spaces with that fern plant. And this turned out so cute. I really like it. It's definitely gonna get me through the summer and to fall. And I hope you enjoyed it too. I love pink flamingos. And honestly, I could have this out any time of the year with my coastal theme in my house and it would fit right in. And here is a close up of how everything turned out. Those flip flops are so cute. I really wasn't sure how that project would turn out on a tear tray, but I'm really glad I did it. And I love how all these little flamingos all work together. I have been keeping my eye out for flamingo products and um, definitely trying to accumulate as many as I could so that I could pull off a entire three-tier tray with pink flamingos. And he, there he is dancing. And I really love those napkins. I ended up using two packages because um, I think there's only six in a package. And the, I'm kind of trying to show you how it looks from every single direction. And lots of flamingos. Lots of tropical beach vibe, and I think that Adirondack chair works well too. 
I really hope you enjoyed this flamingo tear tray video. If you did, please hit the like button and consider subscribing. I'm a new channel and I would love to have you come on board and watch my videos. Until next time, thanks everybody. Bye.